Hi. <coughs> I just wanted to, um, <coughs> pardon me, share with you something the Lord showed me this morning. For anybody who might be in Babylon, and you'll say, I'm not in Babylon. I'm in Boise. <laughs> well, I'm talking about Babylon in a figurative sense. God's people were conquered by Babylon, and they were, many of them were taken away to Babylon. If you remember Daniel and his friends, you know, the whole Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thing, they all had to go to a foreign pagan land. They were conquered by their enemies. And, I, and a lot of times, you know, people are always like, I rebuke the enemy, and God's not going to let them win, or I'm not going to lose my job. But, you know, sometimes Babylon wins. But it doesn't mean we're being punished, because... We're in a fallen world, and Daniel and his friends were men of integrity, but the nation was being judged, and Daniel and his friends experienced the ramifications of living in a world that you kind of have to go through things because of other people's choices and other people's sin, and um, they ended up in Babylon. They didn't want to be there, and all of us can find ourselves in Babylon. We end up in a place in our lives that we're going, I didn't want to be here. I don't like it here. I don't identify with this. It's it's just not where I, I want to be. And we, we somehow think, sometimes we think God forsook us, but he didn't forsake us because God is in Babylon. God is in Jerusalem. The Jews were confused. They, they thought God was only where the temple was or in the boundary uh, upon which Abraham's a feet, you know, treaded, I give you this land, but God is in illness, God is in job loss, God is in divorce, God is in just horrific cancer, God is in these Babylons we'd rather not be in. It's very important for us to know that, that nothing will separate us from the love of God, which uh, we have in Christ. Um, any spectrum of experiences never upstages or puts a di divider between us and God's love for us. Um, we can't identify his love with circumstances. We have to identify his love with him. But something I was thinking about this morning about Babylon is when they went to Babylon, they went there. You never read about them complaining or writing some psalm of, you know, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? They seemed pretty mature that they were going to serve the God of Israel, whether they were in Israel or not. And they turned out being mighty witnesses to us. That's how we have, you know, the lion's den example. That's how we have the fiery furnace example. Um, that's how we get the whole thing where, you know, he prayed and God gave him the interpretation of the writing on the wall situation. It, you know, I'm thankful that they lived their Babylon out uh, in devotion to the Lord. It really gives us great courage because we all end up in places we'd rather not be. Godless places, places where we aren't we feel like it's not really our identity. Do you really think any of them thought they were Babylonians? They had to wear the dress, I'm sure. They maybe even had those little eye things. or They had to live in a place they'd rather not live, but they didn't lose their identity. And that's what I want to encourage us with this morning, is if we end up in a place we'd rather not be, or we don't identify with, or we wish we hadn't been taken there, let's learn from their example. <clears throat> First and foremost, let's say, if I'm in Babylon, I will not... I will identify with my God in the land that I think that I don't want to be in. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to keep myself remembering I, I am a citizen of heaven. I am God's child. Even if I live in, in a fallen world, this isn't my home and I can live in it and enjoy it, but I don't need to identify with it or whatever you're going through. You don't have to be where the person that the land tries to make you into. Um, you can remain a citizen of heaven. They were still citizens of the nation of Israel, even though they were living in Babylon. Secondly, <clears throat> I will maintain spiritual disciplines. Daniel still opened his, his window and he prayed towards Jerusalem. His heart was towards the Lord. So he didn't give that up. Even when they said, you're not allowed to do this. He said, well, that's nice, but... God's law trumps the world's law. And even if a situation in your life says, you're not going to be able to connect with God, you can't get to church because you're going through this. And, you know, you've been, you, you, you're, um, you're a divorced woman. How do you fit in at church? You know what? Forget what the world says. Go to church. Keep your disciplines. Open the window and pray towards Jerusalem. Keep your spiritual disciplines. Then 
I like the fact that we can say, I'm in Babylon, but I'm going to adapt to the environment I'm in without compromise. Remember, they didn't eat the king's meat. They didn't bow down to the image when they were commanded to. They stayed in the land, but they knew their boundaries. So, you know, um, you have to adapt when you end up in a place you'd rather not be. If you end up in jail and you don't want to be there, if you end up in financial ruin, if you end up with terminal cancer, it's like, ugh, my Babylon. But you have to say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to adapt, but show me the boundaries. Show me what not to bow down to. Show me how to maintain integrity and commitment to you in a place I'd rather not be. Maybe you're the mother of a of someone addicted to drugs or your husband is just made some really bad choice. You're like, I didn't want this kind of marriage. Lord, show me. I'm in Babylon. How, like Daniel and his friends, do I not bow down to anything saying, bow down to me, be depressed, say I'm a bad wife because he's this way. His choices do not determine whether you're a good wife or not. Okay? And even though there was an edict that said, bow down to this statue, they didn't. And they wouldn't let the music of the world, uh, Babylon, uh, tell them what to do. If you remember, when they had to bow down to the idol, <clears throat> there was music that went right before it. And sometimes we'll start hearing a song, you know, like, you're ugly, or you're rejected, you're a terrible mom. And you start bowing down, I am, I am. No. When you hear those those songs of Babylon, don't let those songs convince you to bow down to what the world's trying to tell you. And lastly, say, I'm going to be aware of any bullying Babylon might try against me. And what I mean by that is there were edicts. You can't bow down. You can't pray to anybody but the king was one of the edicts. Another one was you have to bow down to this weird idol. Daniel and his friends didn't let consequences or potential consequences or the climate in which they lived tell them what to do. Um, they knew what Babylon was trying to tell them to do, but they knew what they were supposed to do. And their allegiance was to the Lord. And their identity was in their relationship with God and with their love for him. And they were loyal to him in Babylon as much as they were loyal to him in Jerusalem. Our environment, our conditions, what we're in that we'd rather not be in, that's not our identity. And we shouldn't be bullied by it. You know, sometimes um, you can go through things like, oh, you know, um, you might as well just quit everything and curl up and, and quit the world. Or here, take this narcotic. That'll you Take a drink. That'll take away the edge. Don't be bullied by this world. Understand that you are in a place you'd rather not be. And God loves you. And he understands and you could tell him that. But within the place we'd rather not be, let's be in the things that God wants us to be. That will get us through the land we'd rather not be in. Don't let your environment, don't let your situations dictate to you what you're supposed to do or tell you who you are. Really, don't resist that. I know when things are oppressive, you know, you feel like you're, you're, you're like there's an edict. You feel like I, I can't do this, but you know, we can't, but in ourselves, but through him, we can, we have to quiet our soul, re-identify ourselves with <clears throat> who we are, not where we are, because where we are is not who we are. And the Lord will help us make it through our Babylons without compromising. So once again, let's identify with God in a land we'd rather not be in. Let's maintain those disciplines that help promote and maintain our identity. Adapt to our environment without compromise. And be aware of any bullying your Babylon is trying to do to you. Lord, I pray, God, that you would give us the strength to make it through places we'd rather not be in. Help us to learn from Daniel and his friends how to not eat the king's meat, how to not bow down to an idol, how to not quit doing what we're supposed to do when the king says you're not allowed to pray to anyone. <clears throat> and Lord, ultimately, Lord, that we would even gather together with the people who really love you and find our identity in you and in the people of God. Lord, help us not <clears throat> overly put emphasis on, you know, if we have to wear clothes of Babylon or be involved in things. I'm sure they had to, you know, be about teaching people stupid things. They'd rather not. <laughs> but Lord, help us to do everything unto you to glorify you in our Babylon and to still know that we're just as much loved in a place we'd rather not be than in a place we'd rather be. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ and for his glory and within his safety and love we pray. 
in Jesus' name. Amen.